Um, so tell us how you will use generative AI to impact 5 million young people in Africa in the coming five years. Be specific and describe how you will measure the impact of your idea and what role technology will play and where technology will play a role. So I just need like two or three volunteers um, who can tell us about the idea they came up with and what they wrote on an essay. Are there any volunteers? No, I can't hear. Uh, all right, it's okay. Uh, I was not also uh, struggling to hear her, but she's joining again. One minute. There might be technical issues. I'm um, sorry, guys, my network dropped, but I hope you can hear me well. Okay, so sorry about that. Let's go on. Um, do we have anyone who wants to share? Um, yeah, we have Jabez and then Sheila. Please tell us about the idea you came up with. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I hope you can hear me. Very well. Okay, so uh, my idea was to create a learning platform for students in Africa, so that uh, uh, using uh, uh, generative AI and machine learning, and what uh, I was thinking is that we can automate uh, the learning platform through generative AI and also machine learning, like repetitive tasks, like grading and other things and another thing is that we can also create a, a chatbot where students can uh, ask questions and uh, receive answers from this uh, uh, generative ai based uh, chatbot and something like that and what how how do you how will you measure the impact and sustainability, and you think your idea can scale? Okay, so since it is a, a learning platform, I can measure the impact uh, based on uh, the grades of students, how uh, it's improved uh, through time because of this learning platform. We can uh, uh, collect the statistics on uh, the, the grades before using the learning platform and 
after that, then you can compare and see how much difference uh, this uh, learning platform makes. Um, that's great. Um, so, Sheila? Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Go on. Um, okay, so um, my idea for um, harnessing generative AI was promoting safety of women in Africa, um, as there had been many cases that had been going on. So I decided, like, especially in my country, so I decided to, like, come home and harness the power of generative AI to create a platform whereby um, it could be able to pick up um, past events that had happened and be able to assess um, the risks and uh, the danger zones and the problems that women have been facing when it comes to safety. And also the platform would also include a chatbot whereby um, we, which will have an anonymity feature whereby women would talk about their experiences and this will be able to help in collecting data. Then the generative AI component and machine learning will be able to create new ideas on how to assess risky situations for women and be able to provide information on that and also um, connect all these women, the members, the people who will be using the platform to various um, um, humanitarian agencies, to um, authoritative places and whatnot to assess the risk. Oh, that's also great. It's a good idea. Um, Jarvis, I think you can, you'll be happy to hear that Ten Academy um, has a, has something similar. So I think your solution is also viable. So um, the AI grader and also the chatbots if you've interacted with Nana. Um, so thank you for the two volunteers. We'll go ahead and continue with, um, so we'll roughly just skim through the challenge and then I'll take you through ways in which we can create ideas, design thinking, and then uh, we will also go through a template that will help you guys to create uh, beautiful presentations for your ideas. Um, okay, so let's first finish skimming through the careers document. Um, so what you're expected from this challenge is to create a storyboard or a presentation templates or just slides. And they're supposed to be a maximum of six. So they can either be five or six. Uh, the reason for this is you don't want to bombard people with so much irrelevant information. You only want to put in the exact needed information uh, that one can clearly grasp. Um, yeah, so we have, so this is just, uh, so the next thing is the framework that you can use to follow to create or proper, properly map out your idea as well. So using this three, six, five steps, the first thing that you'll need to do <clears throat> is to state the problem that you're solving, which I think you already came up with a problem when you were writing the essay. So state the problem, um, and then how, how will you and the solution to your problem, and also like the role technology will play in. So for this specific task, it's for Gen AI. And then you also need to like find past solutions to this problem and illustrate how your your idea is going to improve the past solutions and so number four and five are like bonus points so also if you come up with a solution how is the financial viability like do you think you'll be able to get someone to fund you um you can so here number five is it's you're supposed to like come up with solutions that you think are where you'll find uh, funding. Um, so 
for this assignment, so when creating slides, it's important that we use um, the following. So use bullet points and make sure your presentation is easy to read. Also make sure the uniformity of fonts and readability and address only the key points. Don't no need to add so many things. Um, yeah, and then ensure your slide is titled, the cover page and your name. So on the challenge document, we also have like a guiding template to help you organize your presentation. So on the link, I'll just, we'll, we'll also go through it later. And then we have support. So this is the only tutorial we'll have on this topic. And if you have any questions, there's the Slack channel that you can ask. And then the following links are to help you uh, to help you brainstorm on ways, for example, storyboarding. These are just different frameworks that you can use to guide you through your present your uh, your presentation. So, um, so when when marking your assignments, we will follow this rubrics. Um, that's guided here. So when you're creating your templates, just make sure that you follow this um, rubric to, to ensure you get the full marks. So for example, the slide structure, like do you have titles in your slides? Do you Did you include references in the layout and how consistency in fonts and your language of communication? that gives you 10%, your quality of writing. So how, how strong or good is your English? And do you really comprehend the problem you're trying to solve? Also grammar, blah, blah, blah. And then the problem analysis, um, it's like 30%. Like, do you really understand your problem very well? And is it a real problem that actually affects users or yeah um so we'll go through it we'll go through the problem analysis uh, on the next um slide on the next presentation sorry so and then there's just overall presentation so does the assignment idea to guidelines for these exercises so like short sentences um did you use bullet points and did you proofread and also is it presentable that gives you 20 marks um so the use of this challenge is in future or currently you might be able you might be someone to present your idea somewhere it could be to either venture capitalists or just different stakeholders or you need or you're supposed to present your idea to a company and your different solutions um also this will also guide you so when you're trying to create slides and presentations for the um the the challenges for the training for example week one week zero we're having um the news challenge so at the end of it all, I think you'll be required to come up with a slide presentation of how, um, yeah, you'll be of how you achieved your problem. So this uh, framework over here will be, I think you'll use it over time. You always come back to it and it will guide you to make clear and comprehensive um, presentations um so let's get into let me just share the next slide in the meantime any questions so far someone's asking why nana is not working at night rodas do you have an answer for that
Okay, so um, I'm aware you already had created your um, ideas, but do we present it or just submit the document? Um, so you, you're not going to present it, you're just going to submit the document. And what will be needed is you create slides, you can use different tools, for example, Canva or Slides, Google Slides, or any other software that you will, will be able to communicate um, your, your idea properly. So yeah, just submit a PDF document um, with slides. Yeah, so let's get into the how to brainstorm the different ideas and also the implementation part of your project. So the first thing that, sorry, just a minute. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to look at, so you already, so what, so you need, how do I come up with like a good idea? Um, Hi, Margaret, sorry to disturb. Can you put it in slideshow so that we can see? Is that better? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so, so the first step when coming up with an idea is, so we're going to go through the ideation process, like how do I make sure that I come up with a good idea and so there are a couple of things. So ideation process is basically involves generating and developing and also like refining your creative ideas to, it can either be solving a problem or to seize an opportunity. So for example, yeah, for example, generative AI has come up with, there's so many opportunities that you can has come up with so many opportunities that you can use to come up with great ideas. And the first thing that you need to do when brainstorming like a good idea is, what is the problem that I'm trying to solve? And so to define your problem, you clearly need to like do a lot of research and see, um, you can either get this ideas from maybe news or the internet or anything to see what kind of problems we're currently experiencing. Um, so a lot of research has to go into that. And then you do like, um, so after you, after, yeah, you need to do like a lot of research and get some data, get some inputs from different stakeholders and, really understand the problem, the root causes and the potential implications that you're solving. So once you've gathered all these ideas and yeah, so the second point is getting inspiration and insights. So you can either seek inspiration from like di different sources that could include, um, yeah, success stories from different projects. Um, for example, um, uh, the AI grader that Jab has mentioned, it's uh, it's definitely like a good idea. Um, yeah, like it's it's solving a problem, which is like if someone has to grade like millions and millions of. Um, so the digital learning platform is currently growing and we expect it to scale in the next few years. So how will my solution help uh, the graders or the tutors 
um, reduce the workload and improve efficiency. So you can gather inspiration from like success stories, from, for example, from Ten Academy and research and like real world examples. And then you engage with stakeholders and experts to gain insights into like, am I really solving a good a problem that exists? So getting inspiration, you can use different sources. So we have different government websites. We'll get into data sources in detail in the next coming slides. Um, but yeah, uh, so after having like a lot of ideas, you need to map out all your ideas and you have like, uh, softwares like MindMap can help you um, can help you like map out your ideas very well. You can also sketch it in a book or use flowcharts just to gather your thoughts well. And then after writing out all the possible ideas, you then organize and prioritize ideas. So under this, you you generate the best ideas based on the feasibility, like does it have an impact and does it align to your objectives and does it solve a core problem? So you may have different ideas. Um, for example, let's take an example of a farmer who needs to monitor their farm. There are different technologies that you can use to, to solve the same problem you can use iot you can use satellite you can use drones but which is the best um idea that will solve the problem in terms of financial viability in terms of um its implementation its sustainability you know things like that so then you will get to like prioritize which is the best like tool or which is the best method that I can follow. And then after you've come up with a good idea, you need to like come up with different prototypes and test it out and see if it's worth. After testing the prototypes, you continuously need to evaluate and refine your ideas. So there are characteristics of a good idea. And I think it was emphasized on the document or the challenge when you were giving the, the challenge you were given. So like, does my idea solve a problem? Like, do people need what I'm trying to solve? That's always the key part. Instead of you coming up with a solution that no one will ever use, you need to really be intentional on a problem that you're solving. And then it could also be seizing an opportunity like for example, Gen AI has come, yeah, I already said that. And then does it have an impact? Um, what kind of, so we're going to also look into measuring impact and how do you know if my project has an impact and how can I like measure its sustainability and scalability, we'll also look into it. But these are the core things that constitute a good idea that will be sustainable as well as will as as well as scale and also like have an, an impact. Um, so there are very many different frameworks that can help you um, approach um, problem solving. So there are very many different yeah um, so this specific framework um, uh, design thinking and so design thinking is um, a human-centered approach to innovation and problem solving that emphasizes on this um, the empathy on this five or six um, components so it emphasizes empathy, creativity, and iterative prototyping. So it's one of the frameworks in the industry that helps us to understand the user needs and also help us generate innovative ideas and develop practical solutions. So there are different 
stages of design thinking so the first thing and like the main one is empathy so when you talk about empathy um it involves gaining like a deep understanding of the user's needs and the motivation and the pain points through empathy so for example empathy it's 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 a very human thing so if you look at the things that pains the humans most, like for example, unemployment. And so that's that's that could be like one of the one of the things that motivate you to find a solution. It could be um, uh, security issues like Sheila mentioned on her project. So those are that's the kind of motive that drives you to um, that drives you to come up with a problem so after so after figuring out the empathy aspect you need to like define the problem that you're solving so you figured out the pain point is this and this how will I better define my problem so in this stage um, so the so yeah, so empathy, like it shows here, so empathy helps to define the problem. So when you're defining the problem, you need to frame the problem statement in a way that is very actionable and very specific, and it needs to focus on the needs and aspirations of the users. So for example, if, for example, Sheila's project was um, security, um, security for women, um so when you're defining so when you're defining the problem you need to like map out the specific um so something actionable and very specific and you focus on the need and aspiration of the users like what goal am i trying to achieve here so after defining the problem you need to ideate and that involves creating ideas and potential solutions to address the defined problem. So here we encourage you to um, think broadly. Uh, don't just limit your thoughts into one solution. Just come up with like a lot of different ideas that you think will best solve this problem and then write them down and then using techniques such as like brainstorming and mind mapping maybe sketching um to create to stimulate like creativity and innovation and it will help you come up with like the best idea to solve that specific problem so uh the next step is for you to create a prototype so this could be like a software or a problem uh, a software that solves a certain problem uh so the process of prototyping is like creating it could even be like just a mock-up and uh it could be a mock-up just to visualize and communicate the potential solutions that um are cost effective so with maybe rough sketches or flow chats um you can be able to like show your stakeholders that this is the kind of um the prototype uh for your solution um so on this stage you're also like encouraged to capture the essence of ideas and testing so under prototyping so um and you're, you're supposed to test like the key assumptions rather than striving for perfection at this stage so yeah i hope that's clear so the next stage is so the the perfection stage is will be uncovered during the testing and iteration process so like once you have your prototype and you've taken it out to the market to test it um in this is where you'll gather feedback and insights by engaging with users who are actually using your project um, and then you observe how users interact with these prototypes and then 
get their feedback and suggestions and then that's when you identify the areas for improvement and then you're supposed to also like iterate this testing process over and over again so that you can ensure its usability functionality and also user satisfaction so if you want to read more on design thinking process i put a link here um i'll share this document with you guys also later uh but basically that's the design thinking step is there anyone with a question at the moment before we continue okay so let's move to the next um slide which is data sources so why is data why is collecting like data important for your project so you need to gather information to back up your solution so you want to tell me that this and this problem is affecting this and this number of people so how will you get to convince your stakeholders that this project um that this project um actually has users who are in need of it and you can do this by getting different kinds of data and there's so many different sources where you can get your data from um, a project or a presentation with that has linked a data source uh, for facts and proof checking always appears to be more stronger for example if you if you've read most of the research documents or presentations you'll always see most people um, linking their problems to like who did the research and this and this they uncovered this and this so that kind of backup will really help to um, increase uh, it will make your project look um, like yeah it will complement your project so there are different data sources that um, you can check uh to get your data depending on the kind of project you're trying to solve and honestly the possibilities here are endless these are just some of the few that i collected for example the government agencies this is since i'm kenyan this uh if you're aware of kenyan national bureau of statistics they collect a lot of data um for the kenyan market and it's publicly available so i'm sure there are different agencies for different countries maybe ethiopia um you can also check more on that to get proof for your um, for your problems and then we also have like international organizations like who UNDP, imf and eurostat if you go to the internet and check their websites you'll find um the kind of data that they publicly provide we also have like different research ins institutions for example dolberg ipsls um and the phrc these are just samples but again possibilities here are very endless there's so many research institutions um we also have non-profit organizations like world economic forum amnesty if you just go to their websites you'll find the different kinds of data which can also inspire you and since you're data analysts you can use this kind of data to like come up with maybe graphs or whatever to just prove your solution bonus points also if you improve if you include graphs on your analysis of data to your project not necessary but um nice to have and then we also have like open data portals. So um, this is for Kenya. We have for the US, the UK and the EU um, and also social media. So for example, the current challenge you're doing, you're doing a analysis of news, um, news data. And you can using different um, APIs you can use to like pull in all the 
data from different news channels and do your analysis there and that can be able to complement to show that your problem yeah it can be able to show the problem uh yeah it can prove the problem you're trying to present uh any questions okay um since the topic today is coming up with ideas and solutions using generative AI. I just thought it's best for us to get a general understanding of um, the different gen AI technologies that currently exist. Um, this is for your technical, I'm sure you, um, if you continue through the program, you learn more about this. Um, but basically, if you i hope you've interacted with some of these um, tools and they're different for example from text generation to voice image video and even music so i just put in some samples for each and every technology that exists so if you're interested in like looking at other um, technologies that can help you with image generation it could be solving a problem. Maybe your problem could be maybe trying to like create, uh, I don't know, anything for the kids and you want to create some nice images. Uh, which places can I go to? Like, for example, Midjani, Dolly, um, and also, yeah. So depending on the kind of solution you're trying to um, tell us, like, do I need text generation, for example, the bot and the nana? And um, if you need voice generation for your project, these are the kind of um, tools and technologies that you can use. I'm not going to go deeper into this because this is the technical bit, but this is just an, to give you an idea of the current technology that exists in the Gen AI space. And if your solution falls under the following, um, under the following um, technologies, just feel free to come back to this document later and do research. And I hope it will inspire you to write your, um, as, to write your presentation well. Um, there's also, Okay, I'll get into that later. So after coming up with your idea, there's this part about measuring impact. Um, how do I know that my project will be impactful to in the next uh, for the next for the population or the community? So measuring impact involves assessing the extent to which it achieves its intended outcome or create a positive change in the target population. For example, the problem Ten Academy is solving is creating jobs and improving job employability for African, African students. So how, do, how can we measure the impact that they're currently having. So we need to define, the first thing is to define clear objectives and outcomes. So if you've, I'm sure you've heard of the SMART um, uh, objectives, um, if you did your projects in university. Um, so this is to determine the desired outcome or changes that you aim to achieve both in the short term and in the long term. And this objective should be like aligned with your mission and stakeholder expectations. And then the next thing is to identify the KPIs. So when we talk about KPIs, we can, we can think about things like how many beneficiaries have we reached in the past one or two years or three years? Um, and also when you're talking about impact, like are we increasing the knowledge and skills to our trainees? Like 
and have we like reduced um, some specific problems those are some examples of kpis again kpis will be different for each and every one of you and uh, depending on your project but it's important for you to like list down the kpis that you think like the objectives that you think will um yeah the objectives you desire the outcomes you desire from your solution um so again the next step after identifying your kpis and you know this is what we're targeting you need to collect and analyze data now afterwards um, to access the extent in which your project has achieved and its objectives to create meaningful change this will happen like after your your project has been um, deployed but it's good to always like estimate using like dummy data before to see if your project will have like impact you can also check from other organizations doing similar things to check if um if using the solution that you're trying to also come up with if the solution has impacted um different people so that's on using data again possibilities are endless um so feel free to let your mind roam and then uh you also need to like send feedback so this could be from the partners and funders and project participants etc so if you want your project to have like great impact you need to it's always important not necessarily but always important to have like partners so partners help to if you have partners on board that means like they're confirming that your project actually works and it can be used also in the organization to bring some impact so the more partners you have the more it the more um you the more impact uh you get to have um and yeah feedback from them could also be very useful and then so still under measuring impact this will be after deploying your project um, so you always need to continuously monitor and evaluate your project um, I don't know if any guys of you have done a project on monitoring and evaluation but it's always a key aspect in project management and program management that is used to measure like the impact and sustainability and whatever the scalability of the project and it's yeah, a very important aspect. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, so the last part is on the document you've been told um, you're supposed to uh, make sure your project is sustainable and scalable as well so when these are two distinct concepts in the context of projects or initiatives but they're often interconnected and like complementary so when you talk about sustainability we're referring to a project or the ability of a project to maintain its relevance and impact over long term keyword on the long term so things some key characteristics could be um so okay yeah so the first thing to consider is like the financial sustain viability like does this project can this project get a sustainable funding model that can support its operations and increase its activities beyond its initial funding cycle cycles like you can have your first initial grant um but will you will your problem be able to like entice more and more fundings in the coming years and in the, in the coming future and also so that's what makes a, pro a project sustainable uh, we also need to check um, the resource efficiency. So, for example, if someone wants to come up with their own um, generative model 
and you know how like resource intense it is so you can say like oh i'm going to come up with my own gpt model and you know then the kind of resources that it needs are very expensive and all so you also need to like consider like what kind of resources am i looking at and then you also for example if you're pitching to a company i'm going to help you um, build a data engineering pipeline and then you're using um, this is maybe over you're using tools like uh, the big tools like Spark and Kafka and all, and the organization is just so small and it has like less data. You want to look at like what kind of resources do I need? I mean, that can be done just using a small Python code. Um, so you also need to make sure it's resource efficient and community engagement here refers to like, is my project accepted by my community members if i'm providing a solution to farmers do farmers want my 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 solution or not and also for capacity building uh, we're talking about like local partners organizations or community members um if they're empowered to like continue to sustain the project's activities independently for example, when Jab is mentioned, he wants to come up with a digital learning platform. Like, can I be, is it possible for me to, if you write a good and well implementation document, can someone else come and like implement the same project using the, um, using the, using the training materials? Uh, provided um, in terms of yeah so that's capacity building you need to make sure that your other partners and other people involved can also be able to like reuse your documents and yeah implementation and then monitoring and evaluation you also like checked on it um, yeah so you need to make sure that continuously monitor and evaluate your project to see if it's worth um, going forward and then also the specific thing these are some of the things we'll be checking through so we'll also be looking at is your project scalable enough when we talk about scale we're referring to like the ability of your project to grow and expand or replicate its impact across different contexts and populations and geographies let's take an example of an academy is it scalable enough in the next few years um, you can measure its scalability by just uh, using current data like how many graduates do we expect in the next few years and will they be looking for a job yes so is our project sustainable we can like yes so um, and can this, so one of the features to, to look at is replicability. So if I already have created this project and it can be replicated, can it be replicated by another organization trying to do the same thing? Yes, so that checks for scalability. When we talk about standardization, uh, we're talking about the processes and the systems or the protocols that facilitate um, replication. I think we already talked about it up there. So you just need to make sure that this framework that I've created can be replicated by other uh, by other partners as well. And also partnerships and collaborations. We already talked about it, but the more partners um, and collaborations you have to your project showcases how scalable your your project can be because it shows that so many people can use your technology to grow further and further and so also scalability technology and innovation is one of the things that has facilitated um scaling in the previous in the previous century because um they're used to scale projects 
um, rapidly because they can reach broader audience and overcome geographical barriers. It's okay if your project um, doesn't, uh, cannot, uh, is for a specific geographical barrier, but one of the things that enhances like scalability is can my project solve um like can my project have uh, can my project have people be beyond just my geographical context and that is what for example things like amazon amazon has been used everywhere in this world and it's because of its technology and everyone can access it in the world right so when you're trying to come up with your um ideas and presentations it's okay to fine tune and just improve your ideas further according to how um to this pointers just always make sure your idea can scale and it's sustainable enough um so that's it for the ideation pro Um, so sorry, I dropped out. I pressed the wrong button to change slides. Um, anyone has a question so far about their projects and their presentation? If you have a blocker, just raise your hand. Um, yes, the submission is on Saturday, 8 p.m. UTC. Um, let me... So we also have a template. It's also given as a link. Um, okay. So we have a template for you that will help you guide you and and how are you mapping your um, presentation? So, um, oh, we're out of time. Do we need to consider financial aspect of our idea in our document? Um, Jabez, can you unmute and just ask the question with a more precise Okay, uh, what I meant is that, like, the, you told us about partnership uh, uh, aspect. So, do we uh, have to choose a partner for our idea, or uh, how we we are going to fund uh, our idea? Do we have to uh, decide uh -huh. that now and include it in the PowerPoint? Um, it's 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 a nice. Is that a question? Yeah, it's a question. It's a nice to have. Okay. So if you've thought about the possible people you can, um, who can find your idea, it's nice to include it in your document, although it's not really necessary. Um, so if you check on number five, they've written, if you don't, 
receive funding from your government, you need to identify three funding sources who can really who you can realistically approach to fund your solution. So you can include it in your document. It's like a bonus point. Is that clear? Okay. So let's uh, quickly go through this because I think we're out of time. Uh, so this is a template for, you can use this or you can create your own on the key pointers that you need to put in your presentation. So you your first page needs to have like maybe a logo, the exercise, the topic. Um, it's not written here, but you can also include your name and your contacts. Um, so if someone gets your presentation and is interested in your project, they can always like reach out to you after. Um, so on the second slide, sorry. On the second slide, uh, your second slide should include like a cover page. Uh, so, oh, this is the first slide. It should include like your solution and the title and the subtitle and your name and email. And then on slide two, you can then introduce your problem. So briefly describe it and its relevance globally or in your geographical area. And then you can also uh, include specific data if illustrating the magnitude of the problem. Um, it's good to add visualizations if you can. And then also make sure you've highlighted the industry or the sector in which your problem is solving. So it's like defining your user persona. And then on the third slide, you can put your solution and then uh, make sure your solution is like realistic enough. We already went through coming up with a solution and things to consider. And also uh, the max on scalability and sustainability of the solution. Make sure you include it there. Um, like how is my project? How can my project scale? Will this be sustainable over time? Um, make sure you include that in your solution. And then technology's role. Um, if you can really go into the details of the technology, like if you're providing an end-to-end -end solution, it's really nice to show. Um, it's really nice to show that you really understand how technology can be. So, if you can provide an end-to-end -end solution of it, that's really good. So yeah, um, that's on technology's role, and then improvements over past solutions. So you can then. Uh, make sure every page has a title and show how over, um, it's good to show that you've done research on your project and you've seen other people in the industry who've also come up with the same solutions and see, try and see if you can also improve on that. If you can, well and good, add it to the slides. If you think they, you're not improving anything but another, industry has also done the same thing it's good to show it um here uh, and also slide number six put the funding strategies like will my project get funds from our number of people so ideas here could be like a venture capitalist you could go to a fellowship you could have a rich uncle who will or anyone you know, a list who can like find you to start your project etc again um the solutions here are endless it just shows your creativity um that's it uh this this document has been linked on the careers challenge document and i'll also add the other document to the careers challenge uh any questions we're almost coming to the end of our classes so 
There's no question. I'm assuming everyone knows how they're going to present their slides. And I wish you all the best and enjoy the rest of your day. We should end the class unless Pascaline has anything. Sure. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, great. Uh, thank you, Margaret, as well. So if you have any question, you have to go watch the recording again and also go through the challenge documents to so people who are asking do we have to come up with new ideas everything is highlighted in the challenge document you already have it in your folder but let me also share the link here for quick access and yeah the deadline is on saturday let's ensure that we answer all the five questions on the highest quality standard let's ensure that we invest our time to submit quality work you have enough time to go through each and every question to pause and to proofread everything and make sure that you submit on time. All right, Margaret. Um, there's a question in the chat if they're allowed to come up with new ideas. Uh, why is that, Jolie? If you can un unmute yourself and share with us, why do you want to change your idea? What was the first idea about and why do you want to change it? Um, Jolie? Oh. My okay. opinion is okay. Yeah, go on, Jolie. Okay, my first idea was on medical field, but I, I have other ideas I would like to explore. So I just want to know if it's acceptable. Come again. Your first idea was on Medi medical um, science. And you're no longer interested in that, you want to change to a new idea? Yes with uh, a solution that can be um i mean a solution that uses gen, gen ai still yes what is the new idea about if you can share us like quickly why do you want to change from medical um the medical idea you had okay uh, i've not put it into um, like writing as but i've been working on that particular idea for some time is about um, for the fashion industry where they have a proper industry for their um, jobs to keep in touch with their clients and materials and get access to quality uh, practice as well. So I, I'm still working on it before. But I would like to talk about okay how about michael michael why do you want to change the idea you had michael can you hear us Okay, Michael, I'm not sure if you can hear us. So let's make it flexible. If you have found something else that you are passionate about, then go ahead and uh, answer these questions according to that new idea. But we highly encourage that you use the ideas you shared in the application because it hasn't been almost, I mean, it hasn't been a, a, in a, it hasn't been even more than a, a month when you share that idea. So, you know, it, it, for you to show some level of commitment and for you to show that actually you meant what you wrote in the application, then this is the only way to show it. So, I mean, going through into it in details in this assessment is to show the level of commitment or the passion you had into solving that problem. So we highly encourage that you use the ideas, project ideas you shared in the application. But uh, if you have another new passion or something you wanna focus, then go ahead and do it. But that should be a second option. 
it shouldn't be considered as a very first option. Uh, yeah, so Jolie, go ahead. But to others, all of us, let's use uh, the ideas we su submitted into the application. Okay. Any other question before we close? We are 10 minutes behind time. Okay, all right. If you have any question, feel free to put it in all day too or to watch this recording again so that you probably might find the answer you're looking for. Have a great day, everyone.